Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now. And topping the list, fire destroys a business that was more than a restaurant, a place that had become a fixture for a small town in East Tennessee. Tonight, the Trailhead Steak and Trout House is, well, just a memory. The restaurant sat on East Lamar Alexander Parkway, just a stone's throw from the Townsend Visitor Center and just west of the Wares Valley Road intersection. Late this afternoon, the ruins still smoldering hours after fire crews finished their work. Barely anything remains of what Townsend residents consider, well, a community staple. Owners assessing the damage today, telling us it is a devastating loss for the business that had been part of the community for nearly 13 years. Now, it's actually the second building those owners have lost to fire in Townsend. The first, just a few months ago, at Little River Barbecue. This morning, just before 5, firefighters pulled up to the burning trailhead stake and trout house facing what you see on your screen. This picture posted to social media by the Blunt County Fire Protection District. Townsend's fire chief says that with the help of neighboring departments, they were able to get the fire under control, but it was a tough fight. Probably the right side, the right one third of the building was on fire with flames coming through the roof at that time. Aggressive fire behavior kind of forced us out. Uh, unfortunately, we did wind up losing the building. As you can see behind me, the building's total loss. Uh, the building to the right of the structure was also on fire when we arrived on scene. We were able to save it with only uh, damage to the outside of the building. That's about a building a year since I've been here, or more than that. In fact, this is the second restaurant that burnt that I've worked at. So, and I didn't do it. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's not that shocking. A guy told me at work today, first thing, and it, uh, you now with so many I'm burning, it's not that shocking. No one was hurt in the fire. Firefighters do not yet know the cause. Owners of the restaurant say they hope to rebuild and get back to serving their community. A big step forward in a manhunt for a murder suspect. The case has now crossed state lines from Monroe County here in East Tennessee to Chapin, South Carolina. That's just north of Columbia. U.S. Marshals revealing they tracked Nicholas Hamlet there and police in Chapin put out a community alert on Halloween warning the public to call 911 if they see him. The 45-year-old is charged with first-degree murder in connection with a body found two weeks ago near the Cherahala Skyway. U.S. Marshal Service believes Hamlet was camping there in some woods on the outskirts of town. Marshals checked but say Hamlet had already run off. Now you're looking at video of the search. Police and other law enforcement agencies saying earlier today that their resources would stay in the area into tonight working to arrest Hamlet. U.S. Marshal for Tennessee's Eastern District explaining to us again today why they are putting this much effort into trying to catch him. This guy's a very dangerous guy. This is a very gruesome uh, homicide case out of Monroe County. Uh, obviously, this is Hamlet is, in my mind, a cold-blooded killer with no conscience whatsoever for human life. And so we want him off the streets as soon as possible before he harms someone else. According to Elmore County, Alabama Sheriff Bill Franklin, Hamlet pleaded guilty to murder and assault back in 2011. Those crimes are why he is on parole. Hamlet is considered armed and dangerous. He's 5'7", weighs about 170 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes. If you see him, maybe you know something, you are urged to call 911. Or Monroe County Dispatch, the number right now on your screen is 423-442-4357. Next, we want to turn to a big investigation. TBI agents are looking into why deputies shot a man at the end of a chase. This happened around 1 this morning in Cock County. TBI saying the chase began after Cock County Sheriff's deputies spotted a car being driven by a man who had an outstanding warrant. Now, we're told deputies tried stopping the car along Nettie Mountain Road in Del Rio, and at some point during the encounter, deputies fired their guns. Again, the reason why they did still under investigation. The man who was shot has not been named. We're told he was taken to the hospital after the shooting. We'll, of course, let you know when we learn more. Big answers tonight. More than six months after we saw FBI agents putting a West Knoxville pharmacy under scrutiny. We're learning now it was an effort connected with a case of alleged health care fraud. Behind me, what you see right here, you're looking at video that we shot back in mid-April as agents gathered at Rocky Hill Pharmacy on North Shore Drive. Today, federal court documents were unsealed, revealing that two of the co-owners, Tiffany Haney and Ann Warren, have been indicted on charges connected with what federal prosecutors describe as a conspiracy to forge and alter prescriptions, to inflate bills going to drug plans and pharmacy benefit managers. 
The indictment claims Haney and Warren, both pharmacists, fake prescriptions using the names of doctors who did not know what was going on, along with their own names and those as family members listed as patients. Prosecutors go on to claim that Rocky Hill Pharmacy put together lists of medications, including pain creams and steroids, that yielded big payouts from insurance plans, and then marketed the list to other providers, including pain clinics. The court paperwork alleges that Rocky Hill Pharmacy was paid more than $8.5 million over the course of seven years through the scheme. Haney and Warren were scheduled for an initial appearance today in federal court. We'll keep track of this case and let you know what happens. Next on our Big 7 story, a 10-year prison sentence in a deadly drunk driving case. According to Knox County's District Attorney's Office, the driver blamed in his passenger's death will have to serve all 10 years with no chance at parole. The sentence is for 24-year-old Timothy Hooks as he pleads guilty to vehicular homicide and reckless endangerment. At today's hearing, prosecutors pointed back to June of 2023 when Hooks crashed on Collier Road, reportedly passing a car on a blind hill, then hitting a tree. Hooks then reportedly ran from the crash site and later told deputies someone else was driving. According to the DA, the level of alcohol in Hooks' blood was more than twice the legal limit, with tests also finding signs in his blood of meth and marijuana. Back then, we reported how the crash claimed the life of April Satterfield. Prosecutors say she was a mother of four children. We are your local election headquarters, and we now have the final tally on early voting here in Knox County. The Election Commission says a record 163,303 votes were cast during the early voting period, surpassing the numbers we saw in the 2020 presidential election by a little more than 10,000. The Election Commission adds that more than two-thirds of the votes cast in Knox County were by people who live outside of the Knoxville city limits, with the 55-plus age group garnering the most votes so far. Now. Another takeaway, more women than men have cast their ballots to this point. If you did not take advantage of early voting, you still have an opportunity to cast your ballot coming up on Election Day. Of course, that is on Tuesday. You'll just need to remember to bring a valid ID. Also, unlike early voting, you must vote at your assigned precinct. And as long as you are in line before 8 Tuesday night Eastern Time, you will be able to vote. And then after the polls close, be sure to stay with us right here on 6 News. We're going to bring you live cut-ins with election results throughout the night here on Channel 6. We'll also be streaming a digital show on WAT.com. Our panel of pundits will be weighing in on results as they come in. This all builds to a special edition of 6 News with live team coverage and coverage from across the area. Be sure to tune in for all of this again Tuesday night after the polls closed. And we're wrapping up our Big 7 list with a return to Rocky Top for Tennessee football. The Vols back in action this weekend, preparing to host SEC rival Kentucky under the lights at Neyland. Kickoff scheduled for right around 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Vol Village will open at 4.15. Then it's time for the team to arrive. Vol Walk steps off at 5.30. The pride of the Southland will take the field for their pregame performance. That is set for 7.40. And then the team will run through the tee at 7.50 leading up to kickoff. And when the Vols take the field in front of the sold-out crowd, they will be decked out head-to-toe in their dark mode jerseys. The jerseys have been good luck for the Volunteers. They have won their last three matchups wearing the black jerseys. And here on Channel 6, we have another action-packed day of college football for you coming up Saturday. It begins at noon when Duke takes on Miami. That game will be followed by Florida and Georgia at 3.30 and then at 7.30 as Texas A&M taking on South Carolina. And, of course, be sure to join us for our SEC wrap-up show. It starts right after the games here on Channel 6.